Hello friends, welcome to my new lecture that is cardiac marker. We also call cardiomarkers as cardiac biomarkers. These cardiac biomarkers are substances that indicate the condition of the heart. How? These cardiac biomarkers are present inside the heart muscles. So, whenever the heart muscles are damaged or there is an injury to the heart, then these markers come out of the heart cells and enter the bloodstream. So, if a person has chest pain or gets a heart attack, then when did it happen and how much damage has been done to the heart? All these can be detected by checking the level of cardiomarks in the blood as these markers are present in the heart only. So, if the heart is getting damaged, cells are getting damaged, then these markers come out of the heart and enter the bloodstream. So, through this, we can find out whether the patient had a heart attack or not. The second question is, what should an ideal cardiac marker be like? What characteristics should an ideal cardiac marker have? The first thing is that it should be cardiac specific, meaning that after killing it, it is present only in the cardiac muscles. It is not that it is present in other organs also. So that marker should be present only in the heart muscles. It should be cardiac specific. Second thing is that we can measure it easily. Third thing is that it should normally be present in trace amount in the blood or should be absent. Fourth, it should not be too expensive. And fifth thing is that whenever there is a myocardial injury, it should be released rapidly so that we can detect it quickly and treatment can be started. So these are some marks which are used as cardiac marks. First is myoglobin, second is tropin, third is CKMB, fourth is ST, fifth is LDH and sixth is anti-pro BNP. We will cover all these markers in this lecture. So let's get started. The first cardiac marker is myoglobin. Myoglobin is a protein present in heart muscle and skeletal muscle. What is its function? It provides oxygen to the muscles at the time of contraction. So whenever there is an injury in the muscles, whether it is a heart muscle or a skeletal muscle, then this myologen will come out of the muscle and come into the bloodstream. So that is why we also use myologen as a cardiac marker because it is also present in the heart muscles. So if any person suffers a heart injury, or if the patient has a heart attack, then at that time, myologen comes out of the muscle and enters the bloodstream and the level of myologen rises in the blood. Within 30 minutes of injury to the cardiac muscle, myoglobin is released into the blood. So you can see that it rises very rapidly in the blood. So this is an advantage. Okay, second thing. Its level in the blood peak within 2 to 4 hours and myologen remains present in the blood for about a day. So it is a sensitive marker, but it is also a non-specific marker. Why? Because myologen is present in the heart muscles as well as in the skeletal muscles. So if a patient's myologen is very high, it is not necessary that the patient has had a heart attack. Because myologen is also present in skeletal muscles. So, if there is any injury in the skeleton muscles of the patient, then myoglobin can also be released from there into the blood. Okay, so it is not necessary that myoglobin level increases only in cardiac injury. In scandal injury, also the level of myoglobin increases in the blood. But yes, if the level of myologen is not increased in the blood, then we can definitely say that the patient has had a heart attack. Has not happened. Okay, so myologen rises very rapidly. This is a sensitive marker, but it is a non-specific marker. The normal range of myoglobin in blood is 25 to 72 nanogram per ml. The second cardiac marker is troponine. There are three types of troponine. Troponine C, troponine T and troponine I. Troponine C is present in the skeleton muscles as well as in the heart muscles and troponine T and troponine I are present only in the heart muscles. That means they are specific for the heart. That is why we also call them cardiac tropropenes. So whenever there is damage to the heart muscles, this tropopenine comes out of the heart muscles and enters the blood. Therefore, after checking troponine for cardiac marker, we do troponine T and troponine I test. 
because both are specific for the heart but now for work problem I is used more because troproline I is more specific than troproline T Whenever a patient gets a heart attack or there is any damage to the heart muscles then within 2 to 4 hours this troponin is released in the blood and within 12 to 24 hours its level peaks in the blood and it remains in the blood for about 10 days so troponin is a very specific marker it goes into the blood early and it also acts as an early marker because it remains in the blood for up to 10 days so If a patient comes and says that he had chest pain 4 to 5 days ago, you can test him by testing troponin to find out whether the patient had a heart attack 3 to 4 days ago or not because this troponin remains present in the blood for up to 10 days. You will not do myoglobin at this time because it remains in the blood only for one day. Okay. So if if a patient had a heart attack 3 or 4 days ago, you will find the troponin level increased in his blood the normal range of troponin i is from 0 to 0.04 nanogram per ml and the normal range of troponin t is from 0 to 0.01 nanogram per ml the third cardiac marker is ckmb here creatinokinase is an enzyme which is present in the skillful muscles of the heart and in the brain Gridlinkinase has 3 isoenzymes CK, CKMB and CKBB. CK is present in all the muscles of the body. MB of C is present in the heart muscles and BB of C is present in the brain and gastrointestinal tract. Because here we are talking about cardiac marker, so we will take MB of C here. Okay, we use CKMB as a cardiac marker. What does it do? It's present in the heart muscles and happens whenever the heart muscles contract. Okay? So at that time it gives them CKMB energy. So whenever there will be heart damage, okay? If the heart muscles are damaged or a heart attack occurs, then at that time the CKMB enzyme comes out of the heart muscles and enters the blood. So we use CKMB to diagnose heart attack. Whenever a person has a heart attack, this CKMB enzyme is released in the blood within 2 to 4 hours of the heart attack and its level peaks in the blood within 6 to 10 hours and it remains present in the blood for about 3 days. So, CKMB is a specific marker. It rises very early and it is a very good marker for early diagnosis. The normal range of MB in the blood is less than 5.0 nanogram per ml. The fourth cardiac marker is AST, aspartate transaminase. We also call it SGPT, and this AST is most present in cardiac muscles, skeletal muscles, liver, kidney, and RBC. AST is a non-specific test, so if the level of AST increases significantly in the blood, then we cannot say with confirmation that the patient has had a heart attack because if there is any injury to the muscles any injury to the liver any injury to the kidney then the level of AST increases in the blood so AST is a non specific test for cardiac marker earlier we used to use AST but now AST is not used in cardiac marker If there is any damage anywhere in the heart, muscles, kidney or liver, then within 6 to 8 hours this tasty is released in the blood and its level remains at its peak for 24 to 48 hours and within about 4 to 6 days its level falls in the blood. The normal range of tasty is 8 to 40 international unit per liter. The fourth cardiac marker is LDH, lactate dehydrogenase. and this is also an enzyme which is present in the heart muscles brain pancreas kidney and blood five isoenzymes of lgh are normally present in the blood ldh1 ldh2 ldh3 ldh4 and ldh5 normally ldh2 is present in large amounts in the blood and ldh1 is most present in the heart normally the level of ldh2 is higher than ldh1 But in a heart attack the level of LDH1 becomes higher than the level of LDH2 and we call this flip pattern. 
This was the first cardiac marker that was used in the diagnosis of myocardial infraction when other cardiac markers were not available. But now it is not used because it is not a good marker. Because it is released into the blood very late. Its on time is from 12 to 24 hours. Its level picks up within 1 to 2 days and within 3 to 5 days, its level becomes normal in the blood. And for detecting heart attack with this marker, electrophoresis of serum has to be done and the ratio of this isoenzyme has to be checked in it. Then it is confirmed whether the patient had a heart attack or not. The normal range of LGH in blood is 105 to 333 international units per litre. The sixth marker is antiprobian PE. Its full form is in terminal pro B type nitriotic peptide. Antiprobian peak is a protein which is present in the heart muscles. When is it released? Whenever there is a strain on the heart muscles, then these molecules get released into the blood and it tells that the pump of the heart is failing. See, what happens normally is that whatever blood comes into the heart, the heart pumps it and sends it back. But if the heart is not able to pump the blood properly, then whatever blood comes into the heart will not be pumped properly and will start accumulating in the heart itself, because of which the load of blood on the heart will increase. Like there will be a strain in the heart muscles, the heart muscles will stretch and then the anti-bro PMP molecule will be released. And then the level of antiprobian P will rise in the blood. So in the condition of heart failure, the level of antiprobian P increases significantly. What should be the normal range of antiprobian B? Look, if someone's age is 75 or less, then the level of antipro BNP in his blood should be less than 125 picogram per ml. But if someone's age is above 75, then the level of antipro pro BNP in them should be less than 450 picogram per ml. So friends, in today's lecture, we have covered cardiac marker in detail. Hope you liked our video. Share this information with your loved ones. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.